What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome to For The Fans. As always, I'm joined by my co-host Ben and coming up in today's show, we're going to be taking a look at Germany's mullering of Portugal, taking a glance over the awful finishing on display in Ghana v the USA and last but not least, not taking so much of a look at Iran v Nigeria. After all of that, we're going to sit down and have a discussion about what to expect from today's games as Brazil make their second outing this World Cup. And as if that wasn't enough, we also have Paul Machin joining us from the Red Men TV. Let's get straight into this. So here we have it, day six of the World Cup. Uh, we, yesterday's done with, today's a new day. There's no more around Nigeria. Uh, as always, Jack's with me. You right, Ben? I'm good, thank you. And Excellent. we have a guest from the Red Men TV, Paul Machin. How you doing, Paul? Very good, gents. Very good. Thank you very much for, for accommodating me uh, at, at an <laughs> earlier point in the week after I totally ruined the plans for later for later in the week. That's right. We like to work around people. Uh, for people <laughs> that don't know who you are, Paul, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah, yeah. I present, produce and everything else in between the Redmen TV, which is an uncensored Liverpool YouTube channel. Um, it's youtube.com forward slash the Redmen TV. And we do pre-match, post-match and everything, everything in between. Yeah, and it's very good. I recommend it to anyone who hasn't already seen it. Um, we'll crack straight into Germany-Portugal. It was the big game of yesterday. Uh, we'll start with you, Paul. What did you make of Germany? It looked a little bit terrifying. Yeah, ruthless, uh, I think, is, is the word there, isn't it? Yeah, they had um, Jochen Lowe come out, didn't he, after the game and said, sort of like, we had to we had to go out and we had to win that game. And it, I, I like the way that that has a real uh, air of menace to it. Kind of like you know, we would have done anything at all costs to destroy to destroy you. I know he was a Russian, but I had I kind of had Ivan Drago from Rocky Four's voice in my head when I was reading that quote. Yeah, absolutely, um, absolutely terrifying with Germany. I was a little bit worried going into this because during the radio interview we'd done earlier in the day, I'd said that Germany were going to win comfortably, and with about ten minutes before kickoff, I'm thinking, why the hell did I say that? Because it just looked like one of those games where it was going to be really cagey and really tight. Obviously, it's kind of been the the pattern of this World Cup so far. That the games which should be the really close ones, the clash of the big teams, have kind of just been blowouts for one team or the other. But Germany just looked so, so menacing. And obviously, Pepe getting sent off for Portugal really didn't help them in the first half. Yeah, it was quite an even contest. And then Pepe, we'll talk about this, Paul. You, 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 we've seen Pepe before, did it, for Madrid. It wasn't actually a shock. Uh, did you think it was a red... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, no, I don't think that's a red. I mean, I, I, but then again, I you know I haven't played Sunday League for many years. I remember our um, our goalkeeper getting head butted by a, a centre forward, and he turned round to the ref and said, "Ref, he's just butted me." And the ref turned round and said, "Shut up, you had it coming." Um, and, and, and and to be perfectly honest, like I kind of like I kind of like that as an approach to football. There's not. I mean, look, I, I always say with Pepe, we've seen some of the things he's been sent off for in the past. I can't remember the play it was, but it was that time when he he. Basically Basically kicked along someone's spine uh, and got that got that massive ban for it. Um, that's what you want. He wants to get sent off for. He doesn't want to get sent off for for gently pressing those tight curls of his uh, into someone's you know into someone's forehead. Um, if he's going to get sent off, I suspect he probably wants to get sent off for for, for you know sort of something grievous assault. Um, so I'm not convinced it's a, it's a, it, it should be a red, but by the by the way the modern game is, it, it is, I suppose. Yeah, Jack? I kind of hate that approach of, oh, well, you can't stick your head in there, it has to be a red, because it's kind of just like, he's just giving him a friendly little nudge, reminding him, putting him in his place while he's on the ground. It, it was really stupid. In a World Cup, you're representing your country. You've not just let your team down. Uh, Portugal are going to have a mountain to climb now, because they also lost Contral, whose hammy looks like it might be good done, or his groin, so he could be out. Portugal, for me, they're going to have trouble now off the back of that. But obviously, um, it was already 2-0 at that point. And to be honest, Germany looked dominant even when they had uh, kind of an 11 v 11 situation. Yeah, so how, what, how do you rate Germany overall then, Paul? Obviously, they've come out, they've beaten Portugal, arguably the second best team in that group uh, by distance. And 4-0, although arguably Pepe said enough has ruined that game and ruined Portugal's chances of getting anything out of it. But Germany, are, are they the best team in Europe? Uh, ooh, that's a great question. Um, you know what? Let's let's say yeah. I can't. You know, I, I think obviously everyone's been quite very quick to sort of to jump on the that let's write Spain bandwagon off. And I think the way Spain play. In fact, I was saying this on our show last night was even though Spain got absolutely murdered by Holland, um, the football they were playing was still fantastic at times, the way they played it out from the back. So I still think all all round, I think it's a tight one. I, I'd say based on based on that, based on what we've seen in the World Cup so far, yeah, I'd say probably 
I, I can get I can get behind that statement. Although, you know, they've still got to prove it over the full length of a tournament if you want to totally sort of usurp Spain at the top of the the top of the sort of uh, food chain. Indeed, it was a very German. I know it's, it sounds obvious to say, but it was a very German performance. It was just oh, just, there we go, here we go. It's World Cup, uh, World Cup bingo gone there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's it's a German way of playing the game. <laughs> it's it's sitting around going, yeah, we we know we're going to win. Now we're going to win. They have won. And uh, I quite like the way Germans do that. It's just so easy. And they scored a penalty. Um, Although Muller is potentially the most unlikable person at the World Cup with with his little arrogance and his little socks, which I'm not a fan of. Uh, Jack, you were interested to see how Ronaldo was deployed by Portugal. You didn't think he had the most impactful game. Obviously, they, they, they kind of played in an area where I wanted to see him have more of the ball and be more in the centre. And what ended up happening was they kind of let him have this free roam floaty role and there was a lot of a kind of space left behind him and Muller really exploited that well for Germany although he was playing the centre and there was Goethe and Ozil kind of there and it was a very fluid performance by Germany there was so much space down that right hand side for Germany to exploit whenever Ronaldo went forward and he looked a little bit complacent and just uncharacteristically quiet it didn't feel like uh, kind of the Bosnia-Argentina game where there was a need for Germany to swarm around Ronaldo to stop him playing he simply just didn't turn up for the most part so the next game of the day, Ghana 1, USA 2. Actually, well, it wasn't the next game of the day, but it was the next game we are going to cover. Uh, I have been predicting for the entire World Cup that the USA were going to get trounced by everyone. And after a minute, I looked a fool. So, <laughs> um, Paul, what did you think? Dempsey got him off to a flyer. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I commented on Twitter at the time. He, he had he had a full on murder face in the in in the build up uh, during the national anthems because it was a really poor showing from America. I thought you got like Josie Altador and all that. They all sat there, stood there with their eyes closed, and I was like, it's like it's a, obviously like a, some sort of spiritual experience for them. <laughs> fair play, uh, and then a couple of them half heartedly singing, and then and then you got Dempsey. I don't even know what I think it was like. He was like thinking of every bad thing that had ever happened to him in his <laughs> life, ever. You know what I mean? He's, he's replaying his like his dog getting run over over and over again in he's his mind. He's got the eyes for it. Just literally, just a look of murder in his face, uh, and it you know, and lo and behold, thirty seconds into the game, he's he's, he's got the goal. So yeah, they started like a house on fire. I remember, I really thought you were going to say. Um, I predicted this was going to be a, the tournament where America finally clicks for them because everyone, <laughs> everyone's been saying that. We're going back to '94 because it's surely the logic is surely it's only a matter of time before they're good football because there's so many Americans that the, the law of averages says that you should be able to put together eleven brilliant players because of just you've got that bigger pool to, to sort of pull from. But uh, no, so you 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 did look a little. A little foolish early into that game, but you, yeah. ne- you were near. It was nearly vindicated. Nearly vindicated. Well, Ghana tried their best. Um, obviously, Altidore went off though. Jack, what, what, how big a blow was that for the Americans? I know they still came out on top, but they certainly were on the back foot for most of the game after he went off. Yeah, uh, who was the guy who came on for the USA? It was the Icelandic. Is it Johansson? Um, Johansson. He is very different to Altidore. Altidore for me is kind of that ideal player in that US side, a very physical player, the kind of player who, if you do ping the ball over the top, he's got some pace to chase onto it. And I just don't feel like Johansson offers that because you saw it particularly later on in the game. The USA was sitting very deep. They were having to defend as a unit. And then when they hit the ball up, there was just no one there to hold it up for them kind of on the break. And a lot of their kind of play in the final third was simply cut out because they didn't just have the options to pass to. Um, but no, Ghana were very wasteful, to be honest. As much as um, you can say the USA defended well, it, I feel like it was more Ghana playing badly than the USA playing particularly well. Obviously, the USA getting that goal off to a flyer and then getting the goal from the set piece. So we went into the second half. Uh, in the first half, Ghana were quite poor defensively. Obviously, America capitalised. The same thing was going on in the second half. Not much changed. America weren't really forcing the issue, which meant Ghana's defence got a bit of let up. Ghana had some quick attacking players, which I liked. Atsu on the right was the out ball every single time, which is kind of surprising considering Andre Ayew. Uh, who imagined, uh, eventually sorry, got their goal. Uh, he was starting on the left, drifting in the middle. He didn't really have a set position. But, Jack, you've got more Ghana stats, or stats in general for us. You've been on Stat Attack. I stat- have. I've, I've got them all. So you were talking a little bit about Ghana. One of the big gripes I had, and it kind of I'd looked into the stats just to see what actually was going on. But Ghana, 
uh, capitalised on so many loose balls by the USA. I think the USA made 43 clearances in total, and particularly in the second half, as they kind of got pushed back more and more, and although Ghana kind of pressed, they didn't really create a lot. Whenever the USA cleared the ball, they were just asking for more pressure to come upon themselves. And I think that was yeah. quite apparent, kind of, particularly late on, and I think we can all be pretty, uh, kind of safely say, the USA were incredibly lucky uh, in terms of the manner in which they won the game. Uh, shall we leave that game there? We'll go ahead, right? Me and Paul, you can vouch for this, Paul. We did our very best to avoid around Nigeria. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, can I? My my our, our daily plan because we normally we normally record on a Monday and we normally film at like sort of half five, six o'clock. And and then in the organising of that, we realised, of course, the Germany Germany Portugal game was on. So it was like, right, lads, what we'll do is we'll we'll all get together. We'll watch the match and then we'll record. And then it was kind of like, um, so what? So what game will we miss? Therefore, as a result, oh, we'll miss Iran Nigeria. And well, that, that has the potential to be one of those real World Cup thrillers. Uh, no, amazing decision, best decision we've made of the entire, not just World Cup, but potentially the year so far to avoid that game. Yeah. So, Jack, I'm going to leave this to you. I'm not going to say a word for the next two minutes. Oh, Iran Nigeria, take it away. <laughs> um, well. Can I just point out, I was probably one of a few hundred people globally who watched the entire game. I think most people chose not to watch, which was a wise decision. And I like the way there's like about six or seven notes for each game, and then under around the first thing I wrote was, I don't want to bother. <laughs> um, I, I have nothing to say on it. It kind of got to 80 minutes in, and I was just sat there like, well, I'm going to have to keep watching in case there's a last minute goal, otherwise I've wasted my entire kind of afternoon. Yeah. yeah, you've definitely wasted it as opposed to you. You, you had to gamble. It's like the uh, it's like it's like cashing out, isn't it? On, yeah. on, on your back. <laughs> you were too invested in the game that you knew if you left, there'd be a goal, Jack. So you should have left on behalf of everyone else. You've ruined it for everyone. Selfish. Um, Nigeria actually played quite well for the first ten minutes. They had a few chances, but then from then onwards, <laughs> from then onwards, it, it was it was over. Iran really parked the bus. They set up with a four four two. Sat so so narrow. Um, I think I think there was five shots in the entire game that were on target. It, it was absolutely tragic. That's oh. all. There, that's all there is really to say. It was pro- possibly the worst game. I'm looking at the stats here of twenty nine crosses by Nigeria. Two found the target. So are you expecting Argentina to top this group? Oh, I'm back in Iran still, me. Oh, OK. So, so <laughs> even after seeing the nil-nil, after holding Nigeria, you think they're set to go all the I, way? I think they can shut down Messi. If you can shut down uh, uh, Odawingi <laughs> and Shola Amiobi, you can shut down Messi. Well, that true words <laughs> have never been spoken. So we, uh, we actually put it to Twitter. Paul, feel free to think of, a qu- uh, think of an answer to this question. How would you have made the Iran... Uh, the Iran Nigeria. It's so boring. I forgot who the other team were. Iran Nigeria <laughs> game that bit better. Uh, so we asked Twitter. Jack, do you want to go first with an answer, and then we'll come to Paul. Oh God! You've, can, can we go to Twitter first? I need to think of. All one. right, we'll go to Twitter. So actually, Twitter were very hot off the uh, hot off the gas today. Jack said goals, which is obvious but true. <laughs> um, someone else just linked the the Crystal Palace cheerleaders. But that's how. Which I think we can all get behind. <laughs> Joe, this is probably my favourite one. Abandon it. Play a massive game of hide and seek, <laughs> which I am all for. Uh, someone else just said put a lion and tiger in the centre and see what happens. Uh, disco breaks. McFluffy said disco breaks. Just just every boring match we have from now on. Two minute disco breaks. Everyone just shows, shows the moves off. So there's certain players. Daniel Sturridge would couldn't get enough of that. It plays yeah. for that. Uh, someone else just put multi ball, which I'm sure we can all get behind. And someone else said they have to repaint the halfway line and watch it dry for ninety minutes. Which I thought, Angus, that was that was quite the suggestion. So thank you, Twitter, Jack. This is your moment of your hour of moments now. Yeah, it's better be good. Uh, I would personally pick out eleven fans from the stadium representing each team and let them play the second half. That's actually not that's one of, really that's, that's one of the better ideas you've had during this World Cup. I think the right. quality of football would have been better. <laughs> okay, it, it was like watching the SPL. <laughs> oh, that is a dig. Paul, this is your moment. <laughs> the SPFL, come on, get your brand them right. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, yeah, I think I think Victor Moses should have sat everyone down and regaled them with their tale of the day got to spend with um, with Ronaldo and, and, and Rooney in that Samsung. Is it the Samsung advert? 
and just you know because that would have been far more interesting. But the day that essentially we were saying it looked like he won he won some sort of Twitter competition to be involved with that. Um, <laughs> what was it like to Moses? What like... was it like to meet good players? You know what I mean? He could have he could have entertained us for for at least ninety minutes with with, with that day. I reckon I'm all for that. So I tell you what, that is the most successful Twitter question I think we've had of the World Cup so far. And Paul and Jack's answers weren't even that bad. Uh, <laughs> so we'll look ahead to today. We've got the darkest of dark horses, Belgium. Uh, playing Algeria. It's the first competitive match between the two in history. That's written down on BBC's website. Thank you very much. Uh, Belgium coming as fifth favourites. How do we see them coming out out of the blocks, Paul? Um, There's a lot of talk about Belgium. Everyone's talking about Belgium. What do you think about Belgium? Belgium are the hipster's choice for this World Cup, aren't they? They are. Um, Every, the, well, the, the the European hipster's choice, because the South American hipster's choice is, of course, Uruguay. Um, so, no, I... I I'm very, very interested to see it, just what what the, what they're made of. Really, you know, they've clearly got the the quality in players available to them. There's all this talk of them being the the golden generation, and and as as well in my case, a pseudo Englishman. Um, you know, we're very f- familiar with that ex- that term and how badly that can sort of blow up in your face, um, massively, consistently over a ten year period. Um, so no, I'm I'm, de- I'm dead excited. I, apparently, Lukaku's fit. Um, yeah. he's been he's been top quality this year for Everton. Pay- as much as it pains me to say it. Um, so I, yeah, no, I just as a pure. Sp- from a purely neutral spectator perspective, I want to see Belgium turn up and be as good as the, the hype has suggested. Yeah, Jack, you often say games are interesting ones. This certainly is one of those. It is. But can I just... I want to know, how much does a team have to be talked about before they're no longer a dark horse? Because I've been hearing about Belgium for the last year, and I kind of say, thinking, are they really dark horses if they're fifth favourites? Um, I think because they've not been at a World Cup for 12 years, they've got kind of this stigma around them that they can't be considered a favourite because we've not seen them be a favourite before. Um, so I think that gives them the dark horse type. They've, no, they've got no pedigree, have they? That's the, yeah. thing. That's the thing. It's, uh, it's kind of odd how the kind of golden generation has sprung up because you look across the team and it's not as if all the players are incredibly young and so to see this be their kind of first time in an international kind of tournament on a global scale, uh, it's just going to be interesting to see how they kind of rise to the occasion because there is just so, so much pressure on them to turn up really. It's going to be interesting. Uh, the only injury worry that uh, Algeria have is Hassan Yebda, who was performing at Portsmouth when they just bought everyone. Uh, aside from that, they've got uh, Fanguli, who's at Valencia. He'll be known to quite a few people that play FIFA and Football Manager. Um, <laughs> I think it's going to be tough. A lot of people are predicting that Algeria will actually make their way out of the group with Belgium, both finishing above Russia, which I think would be interesting. Uh, what do we think this game's going to go? We'll go to Jack first. Prediction. Belgium, Algeria. Uh, I'm going to go with 4-1 Belgium win. I think Algeria are good, but I think Belgium just have so much more quality. And I actually think Russia will finish ahead of Algeria to get second in this group. Controversial. Paul? Yeah, it's, I've got genuinely no idea, so let's just throw a score. I'm going to go with the, the general England thing, go with the golden generation, all the hype, all the expectation, one all. He's on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll go over to Fabio Capello's Russia. Now, are they the most okay well there's a few things to say about Russia they're the only team with their their entire squad from their home nation which do we applaud that or do we think what's really going on I don't think that Um, says a lot really when you consider England have all but one player who plays in Scotland from England yeah but he does play in the SPFL thanks Paul Uh, (laughs) um, he's also the biggest news coming out of Russia today is the not literally Russia today out of Russia today in the news Uh, he's banned the use of Twitter and as I've noted in the notes, should Roy be banning Rooney from Twitter for his own good? Because anyone that's followed Wayne Rooney's tweets over the last three years will know that he's not comfortable with it. <laughs> I feel like someone's <laughs> giving him a phone and go, go on then, Wayne. Oh, no. And it's uh, not always working out for the best. So, but on Russia, they've got one player who is going to set the world alight, apparently, if you believe what Russia say. Uh, Kokorin. Has anyone heard anything about him? No. Right, Paul? No. <laughs> if that, and, and yet, I, if I'd seen this agenda more than five minutes before we started, maybe we could have done a little bit of a, a cursory a cursory Google search. That's fine. Um, <laughs> all about him. <laughs> I think, to be honest, the one for me for, for, for Rush is always um, Kersikov, the, the player I always, look, I always look forward to seeing. He did, I mean, going back to the Euros, I expected more from him than actually than he ended up, ended up producing. But he has got 
you know masses of masses of talent and hopefully he can be created on the on the biggest stage but you know you just who knows not exactly the most competitive competitive of leagues is it the uh, the russian no jack how are you feeling about russia and korea um, I think Russia are going to be a team to watch. I think Akin Fiev in goal is a very, very strong keeper for them. He's kind of one of these players who I've really wanted to move outside of Russia, see him kind of in a kind of more prominent European league, but he's always been very, very good for Russia, and I think he's going to be key. Uh, South Korea got beaten by Ghana, I believe, 4 0 just before the tournament started. So mm. they're coming in on a bit of a maybe a bit of a nervy start, so they're really going to have to find their feet quickly if they want to do well in this group. Yeah, um, we talked about. Fabio Capello and there's a lot of pressure on him as as boss when you look over to the opposition's bench South Korea's boss whose name I'm not even going to try and pronounce I've given up uh, he's got nothing to prove as he was the captain when South Korea finished fourth at the home tournament with uh, with Japan in 2002 so a lot of pressure on Russia especially with the World Cup going to Russia next time out where South Korea can kind of kick back and relax they've only got one player over the age of 30 so they're quite a young squad uh, so I guess we'll see how they get on. Score predictions. Paul, we'll come to you first. Russia, South Korea. Ooh, 2-0 uh, to Russia. I fancy Keza Coffin to go over to, uh, to, to get on the score sheet. All right, Jackie boy. I'm going to go with 3-0 Russia. All right, so we're all back in Russia. I will, actually, I didn't give a prediction for the Belgium game, so I'll say that would be 3-0, and the Russia-South Korea game will go 2-2. Ooh. Uh, so then now we get to revisit Brazil and Mexico. We've obviously seen them play their first group game, which uh, they both won. Uh, Hulk is a doubt for Brazil. Not that he had much impact in the first game. What have you made of Brazil? What did you make of him in the first game, Paul? Poor. I, I wasn't impressed by Brazil at all, really. The, well, with the exceptions being Oscar, who looks phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you can't you can't talk about Brazil without mentioning Neymar, um, because he is their player, isn't he? I think the thing about Brazil, for me, it's just... Uh, I didn't see enough of the um, Confederations Cup last year. I mean, obviously, I know Neymar was very much the star that time around as well. But for, for me, I look at that Brazil team, and yeah, Hulk's a good player, isn't he? I don't, know, I don't quite understand Fred at all. Um, <laughs> not, not a Brazilian centre forward. But when you look at the teams that have gone to major tournaments in the past, it just doesn't. Not, not only the players, I don't think, are up to that level, but also necessarily the way they play football now. You know, Scalardi's got them playing a far more pragmatic brand of football, which could pay dividends over the over the length of a tournament, and it probably will with the home support behind them. But I think this is the big this is a this is a massive a massive test, and I can see Mexico maybe giving them a bit of a bit of a bloody nose. Yeah. So on Mexico, Jack, we obviously saw them win their first game in the group. Uh, they're likely to be unchanged. How do you fancy their chances against Brazil? They look very sharp. Obviously, they had a few goals disallowed for offside. I think they met, obviously, in the Confederations Cup, and that was a really tight game. And Mexico kind of impressed me that game. And again, so far this World Cup, I feel as if this could be the real test for Brazil in this group, just because of the way the Mexicans play. I know Croatia are another team in that group who many people kind of perceive and think they'll be the team to finish second. For me, Mexico, after that first game, they look like they have... A lot of potential, particularly going forward, to really cause an upset. And I don't feel like they're going to be the kind of team who kind of sit back and maybe uh, wait for the pressure to be applied by Brazil. Yeah, the other thing to note on this game is that Neymar's dyed his hair. Uh, aside from that, <laughs> as he dyed it, kind of like Craig Bailey. Uh, Craig Bailey did in World Cup. Was it World Cup ninety Euro two thousand? But basically, <laughs> where it was, a, it was a, an ill-advised bleaching thing. I, I can't imagine. I, I bet it looks bosh. Neymar's going for the year 2000 bleaching of a bit of hair like uh, he's done like he's done a few streaks I never had like that the, guy myself the, 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 the um, Jane Silent Bob strike back Ben Affleck frosting technique yeah, like, yeah. the <laughs> frosting technique that is the way to, <laughs> to describe it uh, so yeah what do we think then do we think Brazil will consider to romp the group uh, even though it was quite an unconvincing display against Croatia or do we think Mexico will spring a surprise Jack we'll start with you I'm going to go with 2-1 Brazil. I think um, Oscar is playing really well after that first game. There was a lot of pressure on him going into the tournament. Uh, a lot of the Brazilian media backing William really to step in and kind of make an impact. And I think Oscar did a very good job uh, last game of really having an impact for Brazil and basically being the out ball with Neymar, kind of not having the sharpest of games. Right then, Paul, we'll go to you. Where are you going with your prediction? I, don't, I think... If if everyone if all the, the Twitter outrage after the first Brazil game is to be believed, then Brazil will win this um, by some sort of 
paid refereeing decisions. Um, but I, I think I mean, my old man made a great a great comment about Brazil though is that it's good for the tournaments in general to see Brazil go through mainly because we just don't want people rioting in the streets no. um, and taking over stadiums and what have you. So I, I do want to see Brazil. I want to see Brazil progress. Although I do see that this this will be a little bit tricky. So in fact, score prediction. I don't know. Two two one Brazil. Okay, I will go with a. 4-0 Brazil. I think Mexico will be a little bit, a little bit overawed by the occasion. Now, we wanted to have you on later in the week, Paul, but you, you turned us down for, for other of the venues you're at. I'm uh, out with, I'm hanging out with Jimmy Bollard. It's, 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 I'm living the dream. Man. And to be I'm fair, who wouldn't want to be hanging out with Jimmy Bollard on the day of an England game? Um, so, being a Liverpool fan, Paul, uh, how can we not ask you about Liverpool versus Suarez? How do you see the game going? It's the what the I mean as far as Liverpool fans go around the world, this is this is the game. This is the game we've all we're all waiting for. Uh, I'm worried uh, mainly for Suarez because I don't know how fit he is. He's he's apparently declared himself fit. That you know not not figuring in the last game looked a mistake when you particularly when you look at obviously the the, the results of the team. It was quite a shock that he didn't get off the bench at all. Um, my concern is he's the kind of player that gives 110 percent, the biggest as big a cliche as it is, in everything he does in life. You know, if you knock if you knocked on his door at eight o'clock in the morning on a Sunday and said you fancy a kick about, he'd go yeah. and he'd rock up and he and he you know and he'd give it. He would literally be doing exactly the same as he does in, in Premier League games. Um, so my fear is if he's not fully fit, he'll go out and he'll go out and he'll crock himself. And that's just purely from a Liverpool perspective and from an England perspective, which is a slightly harder hat for me to wear. Um, yeah, you don't want him. You don't want Luis Suarez firing on all cylinders because I think there's there are, there are limitations in that in that England side, and he's a world class player, and he has the ability to damage far better players uh, that England have got in their back four. Yeah, we'll, yeah talk about, we'll talk about it later in the week, but I I do find it interesting that Suarez will be without his England colleagues, whereas our England players, who obviously usually wear a Liverpool shirt, they're without their main man. So it'll yeah. be very interesting to see how they work without each other um, on the same pitch. I, I, I'm really excited for it. So we'll get, we'll get a prediction from you. Where do you see it going in the England-Uruguay game? Um, ooh, I've got a feeling. I, I mean, I'd like, to see, I'd like to see England pick up where they left off against Italy to a certain extent, improve upon it, make, you know, fix the mistake, the, the glare of mistakes that were there tactically uh, and go out and beat Uruguay. But I just think I've got a feeling that it'll end up being a draw and it'll go down to the to the last game against uh, against Costa Rica, so maybe right. one, a one or maybe even a two or. All right, well, Jack, you'll get your uh, your go on Thursday. Excellent. <laughs> right, but have you got the time already, Jack? Because you, uh, people are waiting for this. People are talking about this on the forums. They want this uh, this quiz. They want it every single day. So, are you ready with the thirty second time? I will get the timer. Do you want to explain the rules to Paul? I've got this image of him being sat there thinking I wasn't told about the quiz. <laughs> right, Paul. <laughs> We've got a thirty second quiz of World Cup trivia and questions, and I'm sure you're you're going to enjoy it. Oh, um, fun. 30 seconds on the clock. It's on the clock. When Jack says go, we're ready. Are you ready, Paul? I'm born ready. He's born ready. <laughs> right, right, Jack. Give us Three, a two, one, go. Is Seth Blatter good at his job? No. Correct. Who was the player of the tournament at the 2010 World Cup? Oh, bollocks. No idea. Incorrect. Diego Forlan. Uh, <laughs> will you be tweeting out your appearance on this podcast? Of course I will. Excellent. Uh, in 1998, who scored two goals in the World Cup final against Brazil? Zinedine Zidane correct against which team did Luis Suarez make a great save <laughs> Ghana correct who was England's top goal scorer at the 2006 World Cup wow um, time Joe Cole <laughs> oh incorrect <laughs> it was Steven Gerrard of course it was yeah uh, so how did you do you got one two three four five questions right which puts you second on the leaderboard oh that's disappointing <laughs> the next question was who's the current England captain <laughs> so imagine, imagine if you'd have sped up on the four line oh, answer. I imagine. From the breaks in so much like, yeah. <laughs> um, But no, you, you did very well actually. You've taken over two of our already. Con- actually, three. You've taken over two or three. I think, you've, I think you're you're in the middle of the pack because we've got two people tied on first, but I still made you sound like you were second. Um, so yeah, and that, after the quiz, brings us to the end of the podcast. Jack, do you want to round us up? Yeah, thank you for watching, guys. Uh, if you haven't already, you can check us out on Twitter, at For The Fan Show, or you can go to www.forthefanshow.com. Uh, there you get iTunes, YouTube, all that good stuff. And yeah, thank you, Paul, for coming on today. No, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's been a pleasure having Paul, and we will see you next time. Later.